This video is sponsored by Wonderleaf Adhesive Pouch. If you're a health practitioner in Malaysia and you've just been sued for medical negligence, how do you prove you're not negligent? Well, it depends on what the patient is suing you for. There are three large categories of reasons why patients sue. First, negligent treatment or management. Second, misdiagnosis. Or third, a failure to warn of the risks of treatment. Let's say the patient is suing for negligent treatment or a misdiagnosis. To prove you're not negligent, you'll need the support of other practitioners who are skilled in the relevant act. Even if there are two conflicting views on the acceptable medical practice, as long as they are logical and reasonable as assessed by the judge, and you've acted based on one of the conflicting views, you would be exonerated from liability. This is known as the modified Bolam test. But if the patient is suing you over a failure to warn of risks, then forget the modified Bolam test, because instead of asking what a skilled practitioner would have done, the question is whether a reasonable person in the patient's position would likely attach significance to the advice. So say you have a 40-year-old chef and you're going to do an elective operation on his bad right eye. There's a tiny little chance that the other eye would be affected, but he needs his remaining good eye to do his job and feed his family. Here, the risk of him going completely blind needs to be disclosed, as the reasonable person in the patient's position would likely be worried about possibly losing their livelihood. Practically, this means that the duty to explain of risks is very specific in nature, and the pro forma consent form might not even be sufficient disclosure. Evidence that other practitioners would not have disclosed of such a risk would be helpful to show how remote the risk was, but that alone would not prove you weren't negligent of a failure to advise of risks. So your proof would have to show that you've considered the patient's background and personal circumstances, what they told you, how they told you, and what you told them. There are exceptions such as the therapeutic privilege, and I know you want to hear more examples, but that's all we can cover in one video. We'll be uploading a lot more cases, interviews, and summaries on our YouTube channel, so if you enjoyed this video, you can help support this channel by liking, sharing, or subscribing. You could also check out the sponsor for today's video, Wonderleaf Adhesive Pouch, a new kind of barrier film that can waterproof and dress minor wounds on places that are normally quite hard to dress, such as digits and joints. Check out their products at www.wonderleaf.com for more details. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.